I am Anil Kumar and in this particular video we are going to rationalize both numerator and denominator. We are given radical expression square root 6 minus x minus 2 divided by square root of 3 minus x minus 1. Now to rationalize numerator I have to multiply and divide by the conjugate of numerator which is 6 minus x plus 2 right. So let's multiply and divide by that 6 minus x plus 2 and to rationalize denominator I have to multiply and divide by the conjugate of denominator which is 3 minus x plus 1 times square root of 3 minus x plus 1. Do you get the idea? Now what we do here is when you you want to rationalize a numerator you will like to expand these two terms and keep that as such. So when you expand these two terms you get this equals to square of square root term which is 6 minus x minus 2 square which is 4 right so this is your first term which you get by combination of these two and what remains here on the top in addition to that is square root of 3 minus x plus 1 you get the idea right now let's look into the denominator part in the denominator you should expand these two terms right so if you expand these two terms you get 3 minus x minus 1 square which is minus 1 and what you get here is square root of 6 minus x plus 2 right now let us simplify uh, 6 minus x minus 4 what do you get 6 minus x is 2 so we get 2 minus x from the first term and here we have within square root 3 minus x plus 1 and in the denominator we have 3 minus 1 is 2 so we get 2 minus x right 2 minus x and we are left with square root of 6 minus x plus 2. Now 2 minus x, 2 minus x cancel out and what we get here is square root of 3 minus x plus 1 divided by square root of 6 minus x plus 2. So that is our answer after rationalizing both numerator and denominator. Well, in such examples, what you notice is that in spite of rationalizing both, we have radicals in both numerator and denominator. But then the question is, why did we do it? Why did we do it? So the question is, why? Now that's a very important question. Once we do limits, we will understand its significance. Right? So for the time being, let us understand that if I write a value of x here, which is, for example, 2, uh, let, me, let me show you y here, and then, then we'll leave it for later discussion. For x equals to 2, if I want to evaluate this expression, what do I get? That is what we will see. So we get square root of 6 minus 2 minus 2 divided by square root of 3 minus 2 minus 1 and that is square root of 6 minus 2 is 4 minus 2 divided by square root of 1 minus 1 and that gives us 2 minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 0 over 0. Do you see that? So for x equals to I was saying 2 for x equals to 2 we substitute 2 we get 0 over 0 in the original equation if I do the same substitution here, what do I get? Let me see that. We get square root of 3 minus 2 plus 1 divided by square root of 6 minus 2 plus 2. Now this is 1 plus 1 which is 2 and denominator is, is uh, 4 square root is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. We get the answer as 1 over 4. Do you see that? So there is definitely something which is of our interest 
in the original equation, if I put x equals to 2, then we get 0 over 0 in the original equation, but in the second equation, I get 1 over 4. Do you see that? For the same value, x equals to 2. So definitely, by rationalization, we have made some difference. 0 over 0 is not defined. Do you see? It has meaning, no meaning, it's meaningless. But 1 over 4 has a lot of meaning. Do you understand that part? And that's the beauty which we are going to explore when we discuss limits of radical functions. That's interesting. Looking forward to that. Thank you and all the best.